We will now list some methods of uh, inducing magnetic anisotropy that's other than magnetocrystalline anisotropy. Uh, we will see that magnetic anisotropy can be produced by uh, some treatments such as annealing in fields. So we will talk about uh, what options we have in order to induce magnetic anisotropy in magnetic tin films and magnetic uh, bulk objects. So magnetic anisotropy So we're talking about now extrinsic anisotropy uh, can also be produced by a treatment. such as annealing in magnetic field. So there are several techniques. So first I want to talk about um, the anisotropy that we can induce in the growth process. So we can do that by choosing an appropriate um, substrate. So the first technique we can use is by choosing an appropriate substrate. The polycrystalline tin film, for example, if we're using sputtering, uh, DC magnetron sputtering, the polycrystalline uh, tin film that we are depositing uh, may grow with a preferred crystal orientation. So that is due to the uh, good matching with the lattice substrate. So the non-randomness of the grain orientations results in anisotropy. A good example for this, uh, if we grow iron on platinum, uh, this is going to grow with a 1 1 1 texture. So it's texture along the uh, body diagonal. Now we can also uh, induce magnetic anisotropy by uh, doing the growth process in field or annealing in field. So there are two ways we can do field induced anisotropy. So uh, we can uh, deposit a magnetic tin film in the presence of a magnetic field by doing so we can give it a preferred orientation An alternative method is uh, annealing in fields. So by heating, the film is already deposited. We heat it and slowly cooling down a sample, a specimen 
in the presence of a magnetic field we can induce anisotropy. So we have two uh, treatments for field-induced anisotropy. This is uh, the position in field, or we can do annealing in field. Or we can do both. We can do uh, annealing in the deposition process in field as well. But then we have to be careful not to destroy the magnet that is producing the magnetic field. Okay. Uh, for bulk samples, uh, there is something called roll anisotropy. So if you have a sheet of uh, ferromagnetic metal, uh, you can roll it along some certain direction. So if this is our uh, 100 direction, we can uh, roll it in this direction. So this is the 0, 0, 001 plane. And you can see that uh, by doing so, uh, we can induce anisotropy. So you will see that we're producing magnetic domains here with this structure, uh, with this orientation. So the idea is uh, rolling along a direction creates, it's a crystal direction, it creates a uniaxial anisotropy that is perpendicular to the roll direction. For example, this is used in iron nickel alloys, perm alloys. Okay, so what happens in these treatments is that uh, during these treatments, uh, you will see that the atoms will migrate along defects. So iron and nickel atoms migrate along the defects that we're introducing in the rolling process and uh, an increased number of iron iron and nickel nickel neighbors form along the easy axis. So this produces the anisotropy. Now alternatively we can uh, produce defects in the sample using magnetic radiation. Uh, we can use uh, stress induced anisotropy so we can apply mechanical stress or we can uh, use for example laser to have photo induced anisotropy. Um, in, in any case, so what, what we were trying to do is uh, create uh, defects that allow migration of atoms. So there are several ways one can do this uh, to induce directional ordering. Okay, so in summary, we're talking about extrinsic anisotropy, induced magnetic anisotropy. This can be done in several ways. Uh, 
texture induced anisotropy we can choose an appropriate substrate and the film will grow with a preferred crystal orientation for example growing uh, iron and platinum induces a 1 1 1 texture uh, so that's a good way to produce uh, anisotropy in polycrystalline uh, tin films uh, in field induced anisotropy uh, we can deposit the magnetic tin film in the presence of a magnetic field or we can anneal it after the deposition inside the magnetic field. They both give magnetic anisotropy. We can use, uh, for a bulk material, we can use a sheet, for example. Uh, we can uh, roll it along some crystal direction and uh, we, doing so we introduce defects and atoms can migrate along these defects and can have an increased number of uh, for example, in permaloy, nickel, nickel, and iron, iron neighbors forming an easy axis in uh, perpendicular to the roll direction, which is a, a uniaxial anisotropy. Uh, defects can be introduced into the specimen by using uh, irradiation, magnetic irradiation. For example, um, iron milling uh, is one sort of irradiation. Uh, we can in introduce uh, mechanical stresses, we can use photo-induced anisotropy, uh, so we can use laser to produce defects on the specimen, and this allows the atoms to migrate and uh, create uh, directional ordering.